whole first part of the section looking at mindset and I always do that because I think if, as I said if we have our mindset in the right place it makes all the action steps like so much so much easier to do so in this section I'm going to be looking at five really simple actions that you can take to find dating more enjoyable more rewarding and more successful in 2021 and as I said hopefully our busiest time of the year is coming up here and match in January so I really want you to get out there and go out there and try and find relationships that you want and deserve. So the first step then, our first action step I'd advise you to take is a very obvious one, but it's worth saying, which is now is a really good time ahead of that busiest time of the year on match to really do a good spring clean on your dating profile. Nearly every time I do one of these live sessions, I do get asked questions on how you can create a better profile and send better messages. So now where you've got hopefully a bit of free time over Christmas, now is a really good time to refocus on that. So first of all, going through your profile, let's make sure it's done a few things. First of all, let's make sure you've completed your profile. Uh, that can be a real bugbear when we see an incomplete profile. And when you have completed your profile, make sure it has as much of your personality in it as possible. When we're writing an online dating profile, it can be very easy to slip into sort of sounding a little bit like everybody else. So if you have listed things that you like, so an example of that might be, you could say, uh, let's do a festive version. I really like uh, eggnog, uh, elves, and Christmas trees. <laughs> um, that's not, or I really like travel, eating out, and working out. When you list things, it isn't necessarily as engaging as when you really focus in on a specific example. So rather than saying that you like travel, tell someone what your favorite place to travel is or what your dream destination is all about or ask them would they be that would they be open to ditching the beach holiday and going skiing in the winter instead so whatever you do with your profile remember fill it out and keep it really specific the more specific you can be to you and even dare i say it a little bit more marmite actually that will do a really good job of gravitating the best matches towards your profile now we know the other part of having a successful profile is having some good pictures. So the action step you could potentially take this Christmas is to refresh your photo selection. Ideally, you want three to six photos and we'd like new photos if possible. So new, newer photos um, in terms of when they were taken tend to have better quality and better resolution. So if you are able to see family or friends this Christmas, it could be worth twisting one of their arms and asking them to take a couple of new pictures for you to put on your online dating profile. Finally, when it comes to that profile spring clean, let's also think about your messages. Perhaps if you've been someone who hasn't traditionally sent messages, but has just received them, maybe this your New Year's resolution could be to feel a bit more comfortable being proactive and sending a message out. You know, let's go after who you want. Uh, and if you are sending messages out, but aren't necessarily getting the responses that you want, a lot of the time a really good idea is maybe not to send quite so many messages, but the messages that you do send, let's make them really good quality. Everybody loves to receive a message which they think has been specifically written for them and that really connects to something that they've put in their profile or something they've shown in their pictures. So again, New Year's resolutions, let's keep our messages really good quality, really purposeful, really connected. Let's fill out our profiles and yet yeah, let's get a couple of new pictures up there as well so we're all ready for 2021. So the second action step I'd like you to take after you've done a good old profile spring clean this Christmas is I'd like you to think about how you're setting time aside for dating. Now time is definitely a factor we can control and it's something that is so important to getting the end results that we want. It's like if we say that we wanted to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger did in the 1980s, but you don't want to step foot in the gym, that's probably going to be a bit of an issue. So it's quite similar in the way of dating, that actually how much time you can invest in dating really does pay off. Now, I know, particularly when it's dark outside and there's so many good TV shows on your Netflix or Amazon Prime, it can be very tempting to sit inside and be messaging people as you're watching a TV show or as you're doing some online shopping. Now, while that's all very well and good, it's not necessarily gonna really set you up for being able to, first of all, write those high quality messages, which give you a really good opportunity to connect. It's also gonna mean that you're not really present and able to recognize who you could experience 
that connection with. So I really like the idea of doing a bit more mindful dating as well in 2021, where perhaps you can set some time aside, maybe it's 15 or 20 minutes a day to really focus on writing those messages online rather than trying to always write them when you're multitasking. When it comes to time as well, it's also important to set time aside to take your connections to that next level. I'm sure we've all been in the position of meeting someone that we like, and then they're just not able to either meet for a date or a video call for like a month. And at that point, the connection usually goes a bit cold. So I know that sometimes dating, you know, life happens and dating can fall to the bottom of your priority list. But if it is your intention in 2021 to really at least set yourself up in the best way to meet someone, then again, really think about how you can set time aside for your dates. It could be that you save an evening or two a week where you're like, okay, those are my evenings where I'm doing my video dates. And you know what, if a video date doesn't happen, it's also, okay. then you can have your Netflix and relax, but it's good to set that time aside so that you can also just give yourself the opportunity to really connect with someone because when we're rushing around all the time or we don't give someone a really good opportunity, then sometimes that might mean that you're not necessarily making as good a decision as you could do around who you're going to connect with. So let's make sure that we set that time aside. The third thing that I want you to focus on for the new year is I want you to focus on dating in a way which makes you feel motivated, dare I say it, even joyful and happy. And yes, dating can really feel like this. I know from a lot of the people that I work with that they say they'd rather be doing sort of a job interview sometimes than um, getting their date sorted. So when you're in that mindset, instead of thinking that the whole dating thing isn't working, it's instead really good if you can think how I'm approaching dating at the moment isn't really working for me. So how can I make the process of dating more enjoyable, more fun, and more motivating for myself? Because remember, if I, I'm going to say it again, it's not about impressing everybody else. It's actually really this journey towards meeting someone incredible. A lot of that actually is about you just feeling really good about yourself as you're in the process of forming that amazing relationship. So dating in a way where you find more enjoyment, it could mean changing how you communicate with people. Some people uh, are more into messaging. Some of you out there much, might hate messaging and much prefer to do a phone call. Some of you might love a video date. Others of you might be like, oh no, please spare me the video date. So go try and find a method of communicating that you really like. And don't be afraid if to suggest to the person you're messaging and say, you know, I'm not much of a messenger, but how about we hop on a phone call? Or I'm really enjoying getting to know you, but is it all right if we do a bit more chatting first before I do, I'm a bit shy on video dates. So remember to communicate how you want to get to know someone. And remember, the people who you're probably most compatible with are likely to see things in the same way. They'll probably enjoy getting to know you in a similar way to how you enjoy getting to know them. And the same goes for your dates. Can you bring more creativity into your process of getting to know someone? Is it instead of doing a normal video date, could you play a game together or watch a movie together online? If you're actually hoping this crossed everyone, if we're able to meet up with someone in person um, and you don't want to do the traditional sort of coffee date, could you get those coffees to go and do a nice wintry walk? Um, if some fitness things are open, could you drag someone to a yoga class with you? Start to get creative in terms of how can you choose dates that you're going to enjoy? Again, regardless of the outcome, you're going to find a way that you can enjoy them for what they are in the moment. Because honestly, the second dating becomes enjoyable for you, it becomes so much easier. So really focus on how you can change up your dating process to really focus on what makes you feel good day to day, what makes you feel energized. The fourth thing um, that I want you to focus on for 2021, which is another bit of a feel good factor here, is I think we should all take a bit more personal responsibility to tell people what we like about them. So I think we can all say that the world can always do with more positivity and more kindness. And a great the way that we can do this is by being more proactive at acknowledging things that we like in a person and doing this again independently of whether we see them as a potential long term partner for us. So that could be just saying thank you for planning this amazing date. 
It could be like, you know what? I love that tie. Where did you get it from? I'm going to get my brother one of those. It could be, you know what? You've really made me laugh. You've got a great sense of humor. So sometimes, even though compliments can be a way of showing our intention and creating a spark and leading something a little bit more romantic, sometimes compliments can also just be a way that we communicate with people, whether it's a little old lady that we're helping across the street or, you know, um, someone that we meet in a coffee shop. It is a way that we can actually also start to not only give the other person a boost, but you'll find if you are complimentary to people, you also will get a little spring in your step as well. So I think making a conscious effort to be complimentary and again, going back to creating that real abundance where instead of, you know, going, oh no, this person isn't the love of my life, damn it. Uh, instead of going down that train of thought, instead of you could think, well, this is what I did really like about this person, or I had this really nice experience, or we had this nice piece of conversation. By focusing your mind in that way where you do focus on the positives and you create gratitude, again, it's going to make the whole process of dating feel really good. And where does that gratitude start and that feel good thing start? Well, the fifth action I'd love you to take is as well as being kind to other people, I also, of course, want you to be kind towards yourself. So an exercise that I love to teach people to do around this is to tell yourself why you are a catch. So I can tell you right now, if you can't look yourself in the mirror or you can't tell a friend and you have complete poker face, straight face here, people, uh, if you can't say with a straight face why you are a catch and why someone would be lucky to be with you, that is an area that you really want to work on for the new year. I think for all of us, of course, there are ups and downs in lives. So we can have experiences which aren't the most positive, things that, aren't, that don't happen necessarily the way that we want them to. But again, how you get towards choosing a really good partner for you and having a really healthy, amazing relationship is it, of course, starts with feeling really incredible about yourself. So start to also recognize things that you're doing that you're proud of, whether that's a hobby and interest, what a good parent you are, um, you know, how you've really tried to put effort into your fitness, what a good friend you are, what a great communicator, how courageous you are to be out there meeting people in 2021, whatever it is, remember to acknowledge yourself, acknowledge your wins, tell yourself why you're a catch, try and make this part of your daily process, whether that's writing a note and putting it on your fridge or looking at yourself in the mirror every morning and let yourself know why these people out there are so lucky to be getting to know you because everybody really is. So we, could, we talked about some practical action steps. We've talked a little bit about a pep talk as well that you're going to be giving to yourself every day. So let us just quickly recap this chapter. So remember, it's very important when we want to do anything in our lives to create that success, we need time. So we need time for dating, we need time to message people. I also, let's all agree to spread a bit of positivity out there and tell people what you like about them. And also remember also to tell yourself, even more importantly, what you like about you. So before we move on to our final section, uh, again, I've got a few more questions that have come in that I want to get ahead and answer before our live Q&A, which is coming up in just under 15 minutes. So the first question is, how do you best strike the balance between being interested but not needy? Now, the word needy is quite a controversial word, isn't it, in the world of dating? I think the word needy has very negative connotations about it. And instead of believing that you're needy or seeing yourself as needy, I'd rather that you think that actually you do, that you have emotional needs and guess what? You are actually allowed to have emotional needs in, in the world of dating. And ideally, of course, we should all be out there looking for people who are best suited to be able to support us in those needs. I, the difference, I think, between how you express that, well, I think there's two things that are really important. The first of all is that we want to express our needs to a person uh, at a level that is appropriate for how long we've got to know them. So if we've just messaged and met somebody online and we're chatting to them, it's probably they're not the right person to talk to. Maybe if you're having a really difficult time with something else that's going on, they may not be the right person to talk to. That might be, you know, a friend or a family member instead would probably take that place. So we want to kind of slow down how we communicate our needs depending on how long we've actually known somebody. 
And the other thing that's really important um, when it comes to getting that balance right between being interested and um, um, being needy is remember, it's going back to the idea we looked at earlier, which is about reciprocation. So you can take that step forward, whether that's suggesting a phone chat or a video day or swap phone numbers, or even just to continue talking, you can take that step forward. But before you continue, you really need that other person to show up as well and to, to agree to go further in the process with you. So remember, really, to not be that bad word needy. Instead, I think about it as that you have valid emotional needs. And in fact, it's all about instead of pacing how you communicate those needs to the other person. So next question. What are the most important things men are really looking for? So as usual, I'm going to do a bit of a spin on this question. So there are, of course, universally attractive qualities that people like, whether that's, uh, I think, people being caring, supportive, good listeners, people who have a healthy level of independence, who are, you know, proud of their lives, good self-esteem, good sense of humor, positivity, um, the ability at times to go with the flow. These are all qualities that are generally really, really attractive to people. However, however, instead of again thinking about how you can kind of change yourself into being the, the version of you that men are attracted to, I would go back to your self-esteem here and instead remember that actually if you really value yourself, that's actually the best way to become more attractive. So that's about you cultivating um, a nice sense of self-esteem around feeling proud of your achievements and where you're at in your life, really, again, acknowledging your wins and give yourself a pat on the back, and really also knowing your worth when it comes to a dating interaction. So you look out for that reciprocation, and without that reciprocation from someone, you no longer keep pursuing them. So you think you're awesome. You go about looking for people who recognize that awesomeness. And if someone isn't able to recognize that awesomeness right now, you're okay to let that go because you start to begin to trust that there are amazing people out there for you. So question three, this is a really interesting one. I wonder if anybody is going to relate to it. Why is it so hard for me to re meet the right man? I never feel the attraction. So this is a good question because there's really two parts to this question. The first is about meeting the right man. And by right, I am guessing that you mean someone that you can have a, you know, a long-term committed relationship with. And then there's that question of feeling that attraction. So it sounds to me that you don't feel the attraction with people you're meeting. So none of them qualify to the next step of discovering where they could be the right man for you. And I really think that comes down to, it's not probably so much about who you're meeting because for all the different people you're meeting, you're feeling and experiencing the same thing, which to me suggests there's actually something that you want to look inwardly about. So I would, instead of kind of looking to meet different men, I would maybe think about how can you get in a space where you feel more able to feel that attraction? That could be come from a few different things. Sometimes it can be about adjusting, I guess, our expectations around how much attraction we're going to feel on a first date. Um, I've joked on previous coaching sessions that I think when I was 16, I felt that attraction all the time to people. And then I think as we mature in life, we might not necessarily experience that attraction in the same way, but it doesn't mean that it can't grow and that it doesn't exist. So maybe you need to flip your expectations around that a little bit. Another thing you can do is think about how you can go to your dates in a frame of mind, which really sets you up in the best way to feel attractive. So does that mean that you put, you create time for your dates? Does it mean that you put effort into your self care? Does it mean that you actually do things that you feel make you feel more attractive within yourself? These are usually actually the kind of like, again, the secret keys to really feeling more attraction with other people. It's not necessarily about meeting different people. Often it's about showing up ourselves in a slightly different way. So to finish, at least the, the coaching aspect of the session this evening, we're going to take a look at our final chapter. And our final chapter, I had to put it in there for this coaching session because it's all about how you can answer that annoying seasonal question, which is, so why are you still single? <laughs> <laughs>